And this blank we need to set aside for now, put your name on it. Uh, we're going to set it aside and we'll use all of this material when we go to splice the spar. So the black mark here is where my sight line is going to be to bend this, and the red lines are where my bend is going to begin and end. Notice that the black line is in between the two red lines, and it always will be on a 90 degree angle. But it's not exactly in the center. You need to measure it out piece by piece. Let's bend it. Okay. So now we need to locate the center of where each of these holes is going to go. And you'll notice it's measured from the center of the spar. So I have 24 inches of material, so the center of that's going to be at 12 inches. We're going to go ahead and center up where that is. And then you can see we're measured from the center. We come 2 and 5 eighths inches over from that spot. So there's 2 and 5 eighths of an inch. Alright, so we're going to set our nail die on the bottom, and we're going to set our spar facing upwards. The female die is going to set across the top, make sure everything is perfectly centered. This is the one chance you have to make it centered. It doesn't take a lot of force, but it does require that you be pretty careful and that you keep everything centered up. If you allow this die not to be in the center, you're going to get some pretty lousy looking flanges. And they start at the very center. So just like we did before, it's 24 inches, so the center is at 12. That's my center mark. And I'm going to mark out at 3 quarters of an inch each direction. But I want to tell you about one of the mistakes that probably happens to more people than anything else on this particular spar. And that is that they don't line up their hole pattern on the center. And if those holes don't line up, it's going to be really hard to patch those holes and make them line up later. So once again, when we lay out the hole pattern, it begins at the center. The easiest way that I've found to drill this is to mount it in a pair of vices across here so that our workpiece is supported. Since these, this is 24 inches wide, and these need to be 11 and a quarter inches wide, we're going to make one angle piece, and then we're going to cut it in half and get enough to repair both sides out of that. So each of these is going to be at 0.67 inches. Now, I need to know which side I'm measuring from, because the side I measure from is the side I'm going to stick into the break. So I'm going to put a little X on this side, that's the side I'm going to measure from. Okay, putting this into the bending brake, I put this side with the X in first, because that's the direction I pulled my lines off, my measurements off of. And I'm going to line this up. And then I need it to I need to make sure that it is really, really firmly in position. I'm going to clamp this into the corner. I'm going to clamp it into the corner this direction, and I'm going to clamp it into the corner the other direction, so that it's nice and firm, corner, it, it's tight on both sides, both ways, up in that corner, and only then am I going to be ready to start doing my drilling. So I'm going to grab my marker. And I'm going to put a great big green dot over here and a green dot over here to remind myself that that's how these pieces go. The other side, I'll probably put a big blue dot on each side, or maybe I'll put a green X. Something to make sure that they do not get lost. I have had a couple of students in the past go ahead and cut the spar in half with the pieces that they built in the middle, and that kind of defeats the whole purpose of building those pieces first. So don't forget to remove your bridge pieces, your locator pieces, before you cut the spar. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this piece, and I'm just going to guess where my fold needs to go. I don't know exactly where it is. I'm going to make it a little bit long, and then I'm just going to chop it off with my snips so that it matches. 
And uh, this technique of fold it and then chop it off, this saves you from do having to do a lot of math. And locating the holes, we can find them with the measurements where these two centers are going to go. But there's something important for us to know, and that is that it is more important that our plates fit against our spar than it is that it's exactly what the plans say it is. So we're going to measure it with the, uh, we're going to measure it out with our ruler, and we're going to find where those holes should go. But then we're going to hold it up and verify that they're in the proper spot. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to punch this and we're going to drill through both plates at the same time. There's no reason for us not to uh, get it all done in one fell swoop. So now we're going to center punch and then drill our holes. And what I'm going to try and do is spread a few of them out over the project so that as soon as I've got the uh, Klinkos in, I can take these clamps off. About six Klinkos is appropriate for a repair of this size to keep it from all going wonky on me. That's a technical sheet metal term, that wonky bit. And now, I can move those boards. There we go. All the holes nice and drilled. Now, right now there's little pieces of aluminum shavings and everything packed inside. There's burrs on every sheet. So unfortunately, the most heinous part of this entire project is we have to take it apart and deburr it and then reassemble. Now, one thing you do need to be aware of is there's, there's four layers of aluminum on the outside rows and only three layers of aluminum on the inside rows. So, uh, we've talked about how to select your rivet lengths before, and I'll let you do the selecting on the rivet length, but make sure you select proper, uh, properly. So, here's our spar riveted together. This is a Cessna maintenance manual spar splice and uh, you do not rivet along the last edge for this project but if we were doing this on a real aircraft we would now take this and very carefully rivet it into the aircraft 